You're bailing out the bank industry? What about the common Joe lost their job? Banks are there to make themselves rich. Some guys in some boardrooms are making decisions that affect millions of lives and they have no say so in it. Taxpayer money got to bail out the financial system because the financial system could not fail. Silicon Valley Bank last week collapses in second biggest U.S. bank failure ever. Largest bank collapse in 15 years since global financial crisis. A couple things to keep in mind here. Uh, regulators took over. California-based Silicon Valley Bank on Friday in the second biggest bank failure in history. Um, since, since 2008, it's the largest biggest failure since Washington Mutual uh, was uh, absorbed by, uh, by Chase. Yes. And then um, Silicon Valley Bank failed after depositors, mostly technology workers and venture capital bank companies, began withdrawing their money, creating a run on the bank. Now, this is where it, what you just said. Mostly technology workers and venture capital back companies. So, uh, back on us, uh, Jordan. So, when we're talking about like Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo, it's like you and I just, you know, your common Joe's having mm -hmm. free checking uh, account, right. right? They're putting the right deposits from the job. They might get a car loan. They might get a, you know, a mortgage. You might get a credit card, still, like, whatever the case may be. Talk to us about, real quick, Jesse, what type of customers really Silicon Valley Bank had. And, and, and why it's much different than your, than your typical bank. Well, 80% of their customers were um, companies. They were re uh, real estate brokerages. 20% um, of those were crypto. Th those were the two major banks that were crypto friendly. And this, the CEO of Binance was saying that he highly speculates that they were doing it on purpose to make cryptocurrency fail. So, but that's just speculation. Right. So, little, but, speculation, a little bit of conspiracy <laughs> there. Could it be true? Could it be true? Right. Uh, let's take a look at this screen again one more time, Jordan. Silicon Valley Bank was not a small bank by any measure, the 16th largest bank in the U.S., and had approximately $209 billion in total assets and about $175.4 billion in total deposits as of uh, 31 December 2022. Washington Mutual had, had assets of $307 billion when it was shuttered on 25 September 2008, 10 days after Lehman Brothers had failed. So it's unclear how many of the bank's deposits were above $250,000 insurance limit guaranteed by FDIC. But let's go to the next paragraph here. It says the bank was heavily exposed uh, to the tech industry, and there is little chance of contagion in the banking sector as there was in the months leading up to the Great Recession more than a decade ago. Major banks have sufficient capital to avoid a similar situation. So... There's a, there's a fancy one there, contagion. Contagion meaning that this financial meltdown can spill over into other banks and it can cause a run in the banks with other, uh, other guys. So now let's talk about, let's add a million dollars, okay, in the bank. For the layman person that's listening to this, there, if there, you have a million dollars in the bank and uh, the bank shut down and you want to go make a withdrawal to get your money out, the bank says, I ain't got your money. Because we're shut down, the regulators shut it down. What, you know, can you explain everybody here what the FDIC means? Well, FDIC is we always we've been taught to go to school, get a job, and open up a bank, and we 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 believe that the bank is safe because it is FDIC insured yeah. up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if you had a million in the bank, you'd get two hundred fifty dollars back. The government would bail them out and give you the two fifty. Anything other than over the 250, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, I mean, like we were discussing the other day, how many, how many people actually have a quarter million dollars just sitting in the Chase bank account, right? Just average Joes right. like yourself. So it's FDIC is for protection up to a certain point. Here's a couple notes we took. Before this month, the last time a bank backed by FDIC failed was 2023, October 23, 2020, when Almina State Bank closed. Generally, a failure occurs when a bank becomes insolvent, meaning it lacks the funds to cover all of its customers' deposits and the money it owes to others. Bank failures aren't uncommon. Uh, before March uh, 2023, only three banks, before March 2023, only three banks had failed since the coronavirus pandemic started. And all three, the Free State Bank, First City Bank of Florida, and Almina State Bank, experienced previous financial problems, uh, according to FDIC. Uh, bank fails happen from time to time, which is why it's important to have your money at an FDIC bank. And as soon as a bank fails, FDIC estimates how much that bank fail will cost the deposit insurance fund uh, and quarterly assessments of FDIC insured banks fund most of the DIF, according to FDIC.
I see. I want to show this too as well. List of, list of the top 10 largest U.S. bank fails sorted by assets. Let me see if I can put this on one, on, on one, one dealio. Let's go to the next screen here. Okay, here. Number one, Washington Mutual. And then you got Silicon Valley Bank. And, then, and we talked about another bank they just failed here this week too as well, Signature Bank. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's, let's, stop. Let's, let's go back here real quick, Jordan. Um, so the commonality between Signature uh, Bank and Silicon Valley Bank is, is their clientele. Correct. They had, they had, you, you mentioned crypto, uh, uh, hedge funds, hedge funds uh, really. uh, uh, venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. So big boys. Big boys, you know, big you, players. You, you talk about your whales. You're not talking about you and I. You know, seven figures. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. It, it, so, so can you talk to uh, folks about that again in terms of highlighting? So, if people out there thinking they got to panic, why shouldn't they panic? Unless or should they panic? Unless they're a big boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> unless they're yeah. a big boy. So it's. I, I mean, the thing is, is just the average day ordinary middle class American walking the street right now there's there's no need to panic at all right? it's these are the big players that are in the market um, re real estate brokerages hedge fund brokerages um, crypto companies crypto uh, exchanges because yeah. they're trading the tether um, as, as a store value but us we have FDIC if you don't have more than a quarter million in the bank then you're protected right now the thing is, is like you were mentioning before, this could potentially create a downward spiral. Yeah. And I think what we need to pay attention to right now is the bond market yep. um, and what, what's going to come to play after this, the banks. This is what created it. I mean, the reason why uh, SVP Bank had failed is because they, they sold a tranche of bonds. Uh, mm -hmm. And since they bought it years ago, uh, it was less than the rate that's being issued by new bonds issued today. And so they had to sell those bonds at a discount, which is right. a loss. And so a lot of the bank depositors and, and, and these, you know, larger institutional guys would understand what that means or larger company guys would understand what that means. If, hey, we're watching our bank. Mm, hey, Joe, uh, let's go get our money out. Maybe we don't tell our buddies, but the word's starting to get out. That's it. That now they became what they call a run on the bank, which means everybody started withdrawing their deposits. This is, t tell your buddies, it says right here that there was 200,000 tweets, 200,000 tweets on Thursday about yeah. getting your money out of the bank. Right. So back in the day with all the other the list of bank runs that you, you showed, they didn't have social media like we have today. So it just heightened it, and this is why it's the fastest bank run and uh, there's ever been. So, so, so let's, let's take a look at this. Um, uh, if we can look here, Jordan, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly reported, reportedly calls for censoring social media companies to rent bank runs. <laughs> He denies it. Right. <laughs> Senator asked about censoring social media during a meeting with the Federal Reserve, FDIC, Treasury Department senators and House members on the bailout of Silicon Valley Bank. Right. And so uh, um, uh, it says here, uh, they, they called to confirm. He was denying it. Jeff got a Zoom meeting with the Fed uh, um, uh, that if they don't censor the tweets, it could lead to the run on the banks. So, you know, when there's a run on the banks, listen, banks need your deposits. We go back to the screen here. Banks need your deposits. Mm -hmm. That's why they offer us free checking account. People think, oh, the bank's so cool. No, they're trying to get your money in there because based on their deposits, is based on the, the cumulative overall bank deposit they have that day, they can go out and start lending money using your deposits as, as bank assets. Correct. So, you know, a, a lot of people are misguided on, you know, uh, banks are just, uh, no, they're not there to make you rich. Correct. Banks are there to make themselves rich. Themselves rich. Let's take a look at this bailout recipient. Back in 2008, the, the government gave out something called the Troubled Asset Relief Program, what they call TARP money, mm -hmm. where troubled companies, where, uh, where taxpayer money, your money, had gone into the ongoing bailout of the financial system. This is when, like, uh, the 1%, the, the, the protests, everybody's about the 1%, you know, people get mad at billionaires and... And uh, because people have been pissed off. Hey, you're bailing out the auto industry during the financial crisis. You're bailing out the bank industry. What about the common Joe lost their job? Right. What about the common person that lost their house? Because it was a result of the decision because of some guys in some boardrooms in Wall Street or in D.C. or the Federal Reserve are making decisions that affect millions of lives. And they have no say-so in it, but they affect millions of retirement plans and pensions. 
And people are upset that ta- their own taxpayer money had gone to bail out the financial system because the financial system could not fail. It was a $700 billion bill. By the way, how small does that sound now to, compared to the... <laughs> I remember in 08 when they were trying to pass an $800 billion stimulus and it got shut down. They said it was too much. Too much. Too much. And I, right. I honestly believe that we're about to see a couple more trillion dollars be printed off. Look at that. Which continues to devalue our money increase in Correct. inflation. So the, okay, so nine, there's 991 recipients. So these are the financial institutions or the businesses that needed TARP money, Troubled Asset Relief Program money, so over $635 billion in disbursements. <laughs> Look at this. Only $390 billion returned. <laughs> so in other yes. words, they got a loan from the government, from you and I, our, our taxpayer money through the government, but still ain't paid it back. Who didn't pay it back? <laughs> General Motors didn't pay it back yet. 11, 11 was it, billion dollar loss? Because they wrote it off, that outstanding. Mm-hmm. Chrysler, we bailed out the General Motors, we bailed out Chrysler, they still haven't paid back $1.2 billion. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Uh, look at Wells Fargo, JP Morgan. Let's say I'm having problems with my finances. And uh, the Jesse Moon Bank comes in and suggests me a, a Matt Apollo Troubled Asset Relief Program for me. <laughs> and I borrow whatever it is. I borrow $10,000 from you. And then you and I are seeing each other at all the meetings. You and I are seeing each other at the gym. You and I are seeing each other at the church. You're sitting, right? And I ain't paid you back yet. <laughs> what do you think the conversation's like? It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be uncomfortable, right? It's, it's going to be awkward, you know. Fist, fist bumping, high fiving, knowing you owe me money. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> right. And I'm still coming to the parties. Right. I'm still coming to church. I'm still praying, praying to God. Yeah, bro, you better pray to God. You pay me back. That's it. But that's what's going on right now with the Trouble Asset Relief Program, even from 2008. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.